Good morning, Saints. Welcome to uh, Chaplain Peter One. And we got a word for you here from the Lord, and we want to start in uh, Psalm 85. Why don't you turn your Bibles here to Psalm uh, 85? beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall be glad and rejoice in it no matter what. <clears throat> All right, why don't we read the psalm? Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins, Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and he shall set us in the way of his steps. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen, saints? It's a beautiful word. And let us look to the Lord to understand his word. Let's, let's start with a word of prayer, saints. Heavenly Father, we just come to your throne of grace and we just thank you, Lord Jesus, uh, for this morning. And now, Lord, as we seek your word, as we look, Lord, to you, to, to understand, Lord, and what you have for us, Father. Lord, we know we're in a late uh, day on this earth. We see the way uh, everything is going, Lord, the immorality across the whole globe, the whole world. We see the um, corruption of our, of our youth, Lord. We see what has happened to this generation and the generation coming because of all the immorality that has come upon us, Lord. Lord, we know that all this must come to pass. But Lord, we have a sure hope with you, an anchor to our soul. You are the author and finisher of our salvation, Lord. And Father, teach us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to seek your face daily, to, to realize the seriousness that we are in in this nation and around the world, Lord, and to cry out to you. Lord, I pray for your people to start crying out to you, Lord. I pray, Father, for the pastors to start ministering to the flock the truth of God. Not novelties, not uh, uh, easy things, Lord, smooth things. Not to tell the saints, Lord, that uh, God wants us rich and first class and that, uh, you know, this is all about your destiny. It's all about you and motivational speaking, Lord. But the real heart of the matter, Lord, of what, what is going on, Lord. And Father, this word is for revival. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice? We need revival, people, in our land. Revive us again, Psalm 85, 6. And so, Lord, we pray for revival, Lord. We pray for a sovereign move of your grace, of your Holy Ghost, Lord, the pouring out of your Spirit upon all flesh, even as it says in Acts 2, that a later date will come where you will pour out all flesh, the, uh, the second pouring out, Lord, the latter 
rain even, Lord. And that we will prophesy and have dreams, Lord. And you're going to pour out your spirit on that day. And then you said the moon, the sun will turn to darkness, the moon to blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. As we are rapidly approaching that day, Lord, as history comes to an end as we know it on this earth, and our lives even might come to an end as we know it, Lord, Prepare me a holy people, says the Lord. Prepare me a people that fear me. Prepare me a people <coughs> excuse me, that will glorify me in these last days. So, Father, we just thank you and we give you this time now. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, saints, we need to know the Lord's heart, what it is in these uh, last days what you are doing here. You know, I, in my prayer time, in my study time, I, I meditate on the Word of God, I pray, and I always ask the Lord before I preach, Lord, what is it you want me to bring to the people? What do we need to hear? And, and the Lord gave me this psalm this morning, and I've been reading on it and meditating about on it. Let's look through it. Lord, thou has been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. We must, we must remember, uh, saints, that um, we have been brought back from captivity. Amen? He came to set the captives free, the Word of God tells us. He came to, uh, to set us free. We, we've been captive all our lives in um, Fear of death, it tells you in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. We've been captive all our life in sin. He that is a servant to sin. I mean, that, that's your master if you're a servant to sin. Sin will rule over you. But thank God that Jesus came into the world and set us free. He's brought back the captivity of Jacob. Jacob is Israel. Thou hast forgiven the iniquities of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. You know, God has us covered. When he sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat of that lamb, underneath it was the solid stones of the Ten Commandments. And when God saw that blood covering the law that Israel broke for that year, the Shekinah glory would light up the whole temple. That Shekinah glory that now dwells in us because he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Amen? But in the hearts, our hearts, people, that's where he dwells in us, in our spirit. And he has um, redeemed his people. He has covered all their sin. And not only are our sin covered, we know from the new covenant that not only are we pardoned and forgiven, but we've been imputed, we've been reckoned to the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Is this not so? Praise the Lord. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy wrath. You know, God is a consuming fire, he says. He has fierceness of anger, fierceness of wrath, not because he's out of control. God has his, his emotions perfectly in control. It's us that have the problems. This is why we need to be filled with the Spirit. We need the character of the Spirit, which is the fruit of the Spirit. So God is never out of control. God has never taken by surprise or by accident about something. Amen? Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger, his anger, his righteous indignation upon sin. Saints, if we would only understand, if we could only see, if God could just give you um, an understanding right now of how far we are from God, how far the best of us are from God, and I'm talking about us that he's even saved. You know, we are, we are light years away from God as lost people. And now that we've entered into his light, now that, that cleansing has started, now we need to get closer to the Lord. He says, resist the devil. Flee. Flee, flee these things, the, the, the sins of the flesh. Mortify him. Put him to death. Uh, draw close to God and he will draw 
close to thee. Amen? And, and this, is, this is what God has called us to do. This is part of our sanctification, that we grow closer and closer, and we know, and we know his uh, presence. But the fierceness, the wrath of God is upon this world. It's upon all uh, the unbelievers. It's upon all the, the wicked, the lost. And he says, have no part with them. Have no part with this world, saints. The fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. You know, God had a heavy anger and wrath upon Israel. Look what has happened to Israel. Amen? They were given the covenants, the promises, the laws, the oracles of God. Everything was given to Israel, including a new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 33. And, and what happened to Israel? You know, some, some people say, well, they didn't have the Spirit of God. Not all of them, but some of them did have the Spirit of God. And, and, and God had His holy remnant always. And we got to remember, not all Israel is Israel. Amen? And it's the same way in the church, people. Not all the church is, is the real blood-bought church of uh, Christ Jesus. Isn't that a fact? We have churches today, they have completely fallen away from God. They're in the apostasy. And the Lord wants us to understand that uh, His anger, His wrath is upon them. Amen? But we, we who are His children, we who are His people, the, the holy remnant, we who are the jewels of His crown for all eternity and will glorify Him forever and ever, Praise His holy name. We're the ones, saints, we need to understand the time we're in. We need to realize how serious the wrath of God is. We haven't been appointed to wrath. His wrath is not on us. But we are going to go through a time, a terrible time, in these last days. And we, we've got to prepare ourselves for us. God wants a holy people. Saints, God does not want you to be taken by surprise. He doesn't want you to be in terror and in fear when the trouble starts. It's already in other parts of the world. Uh, people are being beheaded. The wives, the daughters are being sold into uh, slavery and taken as wives by whoever they want and abused. All right? And we know this. It's on the news. It is everywhere. All right? but. Will it come to the United States? Yes, it's going to come to the United States. There's going to be beheadings in the United States. There's going to be crucifixions in the United States. God's people are going to be persecuted in the United States. You know why? Because it has to happen, saints. It has to be this way. And we need, in the midst of this persecution, to have revival. I believe revival will come, but it will not come until the saints are pressed, until the saints are crushed. Until, into this, until the saints are running for their lives, until they finally realize that God's word is true and that we're here for the duration and that we're here to suffer for Christ and to bring glory in Him, whether it be by life or by death. Amen? This is what salvation is about, saints. This is it. And he says, Wilt thou anger, verse 5, Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thy anger to all generations? The question here is, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? We need revival here in the churches in America. We need it so badly, people. But I want to tell you something. Revival cannot come until you hold on to teachings and doctrines that are not from God. Amen? As long as you hold on to the luxury, prosperity, first-class gospel. As long as you hold on to, to wanting to be rich and you have covetousness in your heart, but you cover it up and make it look like it's from God, like it's supposed to be from the Lord. You say, was not Abraham rich? Was not Job rich? Doesn't God bless his people that are rich? Saints, Jesus said, the poor you will always have with me. He told a rich young ruler who was very rich, to sell everything he had, come follow me. He couldn't do it because he was rich. See, it's irrelevant if we're poor or rich. God is looking at our hearts, amen? Amen? And wherever we happen to be, you know, in life, in whatever strata 
or caste or society we are in, uh, we need to have our hearts. We need to be personally right with God. And it says, them that preach that kind of gospel, withdraw thyself. Run from them. First Timothy chapter 6. It's important, saints. Uh, there's so many heresies in the church today. We need ourselves to go into the Word of God. It's time to stop listening just to the preachers. Even this preacher here that's speaking to you right now. It's time to just take uh, as genuine the word from everybody that opens his mouth and says he's a teacher or a preacher of God's word. It's time, saints, for you to grow up and to look in God's word for yourself. And if you don't, it's on your head. It's on your head. Because you know a parrot can mimic what somebody says, but he doesn't necessarily know what it means, does he? And so you need to know God's word. You need to know what is salvation, why you have been saved. You need to know what is God's will for you in his salvation, what we need to do. We need to understand um, that there is no preacher of rapture, another big lie. And we need to understand the character of God is not to take us out of the trouble, but to take us through the trouble that we might glorify him. Amen? If you've been an alcoholic, God took you through it. He delivered you, and now you can go to another alcoholic to help him because you went through it, amen? Or a drug addict, or sexually immoral, whatever it might be. If you were if you were rich and you lost your business and everything, and uh, you, you thought about suicide and all this, you can go help others when the economy crashes, <laughs> when other people in your in your church or your neighbors are having the same trouble. See, God puts that in us. He lets us go through these troubles. Remember Joseph. What happened with Joseph? How did I put chains on him? And it says they hurt his feet and his brothers sold him into slavery and everything. And he had to go through that. It was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, was it not? And how he helped his family. And not only his whole family, but Egypt and the surrounding world. The known world came to Egypt to buy wheat and bread because of Joseph understood Pharaoh's dream, and they saved up for the time of famine and everything. And many people were saved alive, including his brothers that sold him into slavery, because what, what uh, they meant for evil, what men mean, uh, mean for evil saints, God means it for our good. Amen? But it involves suffering. you got to get this. When the scripture says that he took our sicknesses and our diseases, our griefs and our sorrows, Isaiah 53, and in Acts 8 is translated sicknesses and diseases, means the same thing. One is of the spirit, the other one is physical of the body. But he took them, and that's why we can be healed. But if we're not, we got to go through it. God's grace is sufficient, amen? God can deliver immediately. But if not, you're going to go through it so you can learn things. It's time, saints, to wake up that We've been put here to suffer. This is not a time to uh, enjoy this world. You can have joy in the Lord, but not be partakers with this world, saints. It is time to watch, uh, to watch out what we're watching on the internet, on the TVs, what we're listening to. It's time for us to separate ourselves, people. You want revival? Revival's got to start in each person's heart, singular. You understand? In your personal heart, revival has to start. Praise his name. And he says, show us mercy, in verse 7, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation, thy deliverance. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak, and he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, and let them not turn again to folly to foolishness, to their old sinful ways. Don't turn back to it, saints. If you find yourself there right now, even as you hear this message, turn right now. Just confess your sin unto God, and He's faithful and righteous to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen? 1 John 1, 9. Do it, saints. Put away the sin. I've known people that have stopped with the Lord. They've given up ministries. They've given up with the Lord. Be careful, saints. He's a holy God. Surely this salvation is nigh. It's close to them that fear him, that the glory may dwell in our land. 
Oh, saints, all, all morning the presence of the Lord has been here as I've been studying and, and meditating and, and praying, saints. And saints, we need to understand that um, the Lord wants to revive us again. The Lord wants to do something in the midst of us. Oh, hallelujah, Father, we just thank you. You know, saints, the Lord right now is telling me things and showing me things. And the fatherhood of God is extremely important, that God's a father. It's no accident that God has set up um, on this earth society and families, amen? A, um, a man, a woman, and children. A father, a mother, amen? And the godly seed. And the purpose of the family under God is to bring up godly seed, to bring up children that the next generation may be a righteous generation in the fear of God and to bring up their children that way. Amen? This is, this is the purpose of the family. And we see how the attack is so strong now against fatherhood, motherhood, and children. The most dangerous place uh, for a child right now is in the womb of its mother. Isn't that something? Abortion. That's the most dangerous place that a little baby can be. I want to show you the hatred. I was listening to uh, Dr. Dobson on the radio and he had these three ladies on and they were conceived in rape. In other words, their mother was raped and the mother didn't get an abortion and these babies were born. And these women were talking on the radio, how they got saved, and how they and they're just such such a presence of the Lord Jesus Christ there. And when we say, you know, kill those kids, they shouldn't be born. Uh, when people who are even pro-life and they know the Lord, and they say, well, it's okay if the mother's raped and the child can be aborted, you listen to those three ladies I heard, and you will change your mind, especially if you know the Lord. And these three ladies, they started reading some of the hate mail they got just for telling people, listen, we're, we're real people. God loves us. He's paid. He, he, he saved us. He's paid for our sins. We're, we're forgiven and, and everything. We are forgiven. And it wasn't the child's fault that some man raped their mother. Amen? And the mother was, was uh, uh, good enough to, to go and to have the child, not to just to go get an abortion. And, and so the hate mail, the emails of hate that they would get, I, I heard them. Uh, it was like, um, you know, you should be dead. You should have never been born. You should have been aborted. I couldn't believe the things, I mean, the stuff that was spilled out, that the filth and the hatred from these people's hearts, amen? And all these young ladies could do is pray for these people and ask God to forgive them and to give them a new heart. But this is something in America and in your personal life, saints, we've got to, you've got to overcome. Amen? Because this is not right with God. And we need nothing to do with abortion and we need nothing to do with our hearts to kill any child. Every child, raped or whatever, is precious to God, no matter how they're born, with whatever problem they're born, God says, have not I created the blind and the deaf? Yeah, he did. And when Jesus healed, people and the apostles asked, well, what happened? Why was this man blind? Did his father sin? Did his mother sin? No. He says that the glory of God may be manifested. Amen? And that's why these people are here, that the glory of God may be manifested. That's why you're here, saints. So this got to go. You want, you want revival? You want the presence of God? This has to go, saints. And then all this racial stuff. They're trying to blow up the United States in racial wars. The police is militarized. The snipers are out there. The tanks are out there. The Bradley vehicles are out there. 
Okay, the sonic uh, sounds to, to break up your ear, to break your eardrum so your run is out there. Soon they'll have the microwave dishes out there to put microwave heat on you and, and other things. Just wait what's going to happen, saints. The Lord already showed me there's going to be riots throughout the major cities. And the racism has to go. If you're black, if you're white, if you're, if you're Spanish, Mexican, Japanese, Jew, whoever you are, whatever the racism is, if you're in a religion that hates people, it is not of God, you need to get out of it, you're bound on your way to hell, no doubt about it. All right? God has made all men of the same blood, all nations of the same blood. God is not a racist, he's not a respecter of persons, that's us. We hate. We're the ones who do this. So we think that we're better than others. We think, well, you're not like us. And we, well, we hate others. And this is about to blow up people. And I want to give a word especially to the black churches and pastors. Stand your ground. Preach the gospel. Don't, don't bend to this stuff. Don't give in to any of this hatred. God's people are bound by His Holy Ghost, amen, by the Holy Spirit, not by this world, okay? Not by the things in this world. Remember, we fight not against what? Flesh and blood. But who's behind it? The devil, his angels, fallen angels, ruling this government, principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, evil in high places, amen? This is what's going on, and they're inciting the governments of the world and this government here to pass laws to kill more children, to pass laws to marry the same sex together, to pass laws that make up, that make them give money to people who don't want to work, to give benefits to people. You don't work, you don't eat. All right. If you want to live a lazy, idle life. If you don't want to go out and look for work and you think you're just supposed to get a check because some reason you deserve it, forget it. All that's going to do is breed more and more trouble, more and more problems, and it's going to explode. And this is what has happened to people who receive nothing but uh, benefits and benefits and money and food stamps and all kinds of stuff they get. And they just sit there and watch TV, or they're drinking all the time, they're running the streets, they're shooting each other. People, this got to go. And black pastors, you need to stand up for truth. There's got to be responsibility in our lives. God does not have irresponsible people. We cannot blame others for our troubles. We got to rise above that stuff, and through God, we can do it. So black pastors, and all pastors, put anything racist. Put that away from you. Put it away because things are about to blow up. And when it does, we need to be the ones, the restorer of the breach. We need to be the ones that lays the foundation, a firm foundation, because if the foundation be destroyed, what will the saints do? Amen? We need to restore it. And we need to keep it that way. We need to be pillars in the throne room of God. We cannot bend no matter what happens, saints. And then saints also, you need to understand, the mark of the beast is coming out. It's in uh, the government website. It's in the affordable uh, health care. They call it Obamacare, whatever. It's in there for people to, uh, to get a chip. I saw myself, and it's on a video on the Internet, where Justice Roberts asked a question. If he's to be Supreme Court judge, how would you, what do you, what do you think about the chip? How would you vote on this and so forth? Because it's going to come in your lifetime. That's what they said. It's going to come in your lifetime. All right? You're not going no place. This thing is coming. And if you receive this chip or a tattoo, whatever technology is going to be, it says in Revelation 13, you won't be able to buy or sell. You won't be able to work. You're going to be a, an outcast of society, just like believers were in Rome, in the great empire of Rome. Now, they didn't say Caesar is Lord. 
They would tell the Christians, well, come on, just burn a little incense to Caesar, say Caesar's Roman, you can go to your church. They told me that in Cuba when I went for a mission trip in Cuba. I, we, there's churches everywhere and all this. I heard the testimony of this man, and he wanted to be an engineer in Cuba. And they said, well, you just sign this paper that you're an atheist. And he was an atheist, but he said, I didn't want to sign it. He says, don't worry about it. Just sign the paper, and if you want to go to church, you go to whatever church you want to go to. See, they wanted official. They wanted down on paper and documented. They wanted written in books of heaven that you're saying, Caesar is Lord. Well, you know what my Bible says? Jesus is Lord. Amen? And we can't bow down to Caesar. That's why the logo of the United Nations, you see the whole world and around it, is what? That, that wheat that, that, that belonged to Caesar, like that crown Caesar wore. The whole world is in the grip of Rome and Caesar's grip. Amen? That's, what it's, that's the United Nations. That's what this is about. And soon things are about to start happening. And we cannot, saints, we cannot bow down to this. Um, Jimmy D. Young. I got it on my YouTube on Chaplain Peter One, together with um, Pastor uh, John MacArthur. Great teacher of God, I've learned so much from him. All of a sudden I see him with his own mouth say that the tribulation saints can receive the mark of the beast. Like God will allow it, he'll give, an, give them an exemption or something because they won't be able to work or buy or sell, they might have to starve to death. Saints. It might come down to that. It might come down that, um, you know, you're going to be hungry. You're going to be an outcast. You're going to be sick. And we're going to have to do what? We're going to have to go back to our first love and rely on the Lord for everything. Amen? That's how it's supposed to be now. But the church, the, the believers are so lukewarm. They got here in America, even when you're poor, you're rich compared to the rest of the world. This is amazing. And so, saints, we need to understand, this mark will come out. And the Lord is telling me right now, He's going to separate the wheat from the tares, the believers from the phony believers. Because if you look up the tares in the Greek, it looks like wheat. It looks just like wheat, but it produces no seed, no fruit. You understand? And so it's a counterfeit wheat. It's a counterfeit Christian. There are churches right now marrying same sex together. Openly homosexual, lesbian um, pastors. All right? And they think this is right with God. This is the, this is the counterfeit saints. All right? This is understand this. And now, the, and now the Lord showed me the word that as Elijah came on the scene, Jesus was asked a question by the apostles, why do the Pharisees and scribes say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus said he already came, and they did what they wanted unto him. And then they understood, he spoke of John the Baptist, amen? That John the Baptist, John the Baptist, the greatest of the prophets, never did a miracle, but everything he spoke about Jesus, that's what Jesus did. It was, it was true, everything he spoke about him. And he came to restore the fatherhood, the fatherhood of the saints, the fatherhood of God. Look at uh, Ma uh, Malachi chapter uh, 4 with me. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, Jay, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in that day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers unto the children, the fatherhood of God. The fathers, the mothers, the family, 
and he shall turn the heart of the fathers unto the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Amen? This is what God is going to restore. I believe it's a twofold purpose. A twofold purpose. That Elijah came in John the Baptist the first time with the power and authority of John the Baptist, and that is going to be fulfilled in the coming tribulation. Amen? And that's what they're going to preach, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to restore the foundation of the fatherhood, the motherhood of God, the children raising up godly seed. And, and the Lord tells me right now, and the world won't want to hear it. And it's going to come against you for this. One of the highest rebellions against God is to take his creation and turn it on his head. Reverse it and turn it upside down. You understand what I'm saying? This is one of the highest rebellions. And it's from Satan. It's from Lucifer. He's a, he's a, he comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. And so this got to come back now. In your families, you got to keep this as believers. You got to have it, and you will have revival. You will shine as such a bright light in the midst of this destruction that is coming. You will shine so brightly that they're gonna they're gonna come after you like they came after Stephen, and they stop their ears, and they gnash with their teeth, and they pull them out out of town, and they stone them to death. He says, Father, forgive them. Forgive them for this. Remember that, saints? This is what is coming down to, saints. And we already see it's here. Because the governments of the world are taking, are being ruled by Satan, and Satan gave him his seat, his power, and his great authority, it says, to the man of sin, the Antichrist. And he's coming, saints. And saints, so we need to worship God. We need to understand that the spirit of Elijah now in these last days, the spirit of John the Baptist, to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the children to the father. We see when the families broke down in this total chaos, society goes totally wild. We see this in the United States like never before. Saints, let's pray. Father, we just thank you now. And I just ask your blessing, Lord, upon the hearers of this word. And Father, I pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon them that they might start to fast to pray and fast and to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Lord, that they might understand we got to restore this, this foundation of the family, to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the children to the fathers. Otherwise, we're cursed, Lord. He smites the earth with a curse, but we don't have to be part of it. As this world falls apart, as chaos is upon it and sinks deeper and deeper into the immoral filth, and as wars and rumors of wars come, Lord, and as pestilence comes and as diseases come upon this world, Lord, and Satan seeks to, uh, to kill the believers, to have them deny you, Lord, to say Caesar is Lord, that we hold fast the fathers, the mothers, the godly seed, the children, and that they drag us off to prison, Lord, if they abuse us, Lord, if they, if they behead us, Lord, Whatever it is that's coming, Lord, if we have to suffer, Lord, even as you suffered, even as the apostles and the prophets suffered, Lord, even as all saints throughout history suffered because they trusted you, Lord. And the world was not worthy of them, it says in Hebrews 11. They dwelt in caves and catacombs. They were sawn asunder. They were burnt, thrown in prisons and tortured. And some were delivered, others refused deliverance that they may get a, a better crown, a better resurrection, Lord, to glorify you even more. Give us such hearts, Lord, in these last days, my God. Be with your people now, Lord, and help us because the time is upon us, and this can be the greatest time of history, Lord. If we will just give our lives, surrender our lives unto you. And the Lord's telling me right now, you that got families, that are just wrecked, they're upside down, you don't know what to do, turn to the Lord right now. Turn to Him right now. And Father, just baptize that good Father and that family into the Lord Jesus Christ. Fill them with the Holy Ghost, my God. 
that they may seek out godly people, a godly church, that they might be the remnant, Lord, that they may be planted, firmly planted, Lord, because no man is able to pluck them out of my house. Bring them to you, Lord. Father, I come against that chaos in the family right now in the name of Jesus. I come against the things that are destroying the families that are listening right now. God's giving you a word. Some of you people that are listening to this right now, your children are running wild. You don't know what to do about it, how to stop it. You don't know how to handle your wife or you don't know how to handle your husband. The, the house is wrecked. Father, I pray that you restore that family right now, line upon line, precept upon precept. God says he will send you godly people, godly pastors, godly sisters and brothers to help you and your family, but you have to be faithful. You've got to take a step of faith. You've got to trust the Lord. You've got to call upon Him right now. Ask God to save you right now. Confess your sins to Him. Ask Him to forgive you, and He will do it. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead, and it will happen. It will happen. Father, so we just pray for those families that are wrecked right now. Restore them, Lord. Restore them, Lord. And you that are believers, and things aren't quite right. You need to restore the family altar. Seek the Lord every morning. A Bible reading, a scripture, a, a, a hymn to praise God with in prayer. Seek Him every evening. Restore the family altar, the continual, the prayer. Because the Antichrist will cease to try to stop this prayer. In Muslim countries, they don't want you praying in Jesus, to Jesus. I heard him even say so. I don't want those Christians praying. Okay? And so we'll be all over the world. The unbelievers don't want this. We have to continue this. If you will establish the family altar, things will start to change in your life. Don't go into debt, saints. This is real important. Do not buy what you don't need. Do not put things on credit cards. Get a plan. Pay those credit cards off. Pay those bills off. Take them. Cut them. Don't use them no more. If you can't buy it, don't buy it, saints. Don't buy it. The only thing, the only thing I can say is if you're buying a house or buying a car, things that are expensive like that, we need shelter and we need to be able to get around so we can work. But other than that, saints, we need to live within the means God has given us. Amen? So, Father, we just pray for that. Restore that in the families. It's so important. Father, I pray for the pastors right now. Father, take away the spirit of goofiness, spirit of entertainment, spirit of um, wanting to be cool from the pastors, Lord, and have them really start preaching the blood of Jesus and that our blood might have to be shed also, Lord. The true spirit of this age, Lord, is upon the saints. Your spirit, your Holy Spirit, is of a, a grief and sorrow and suffering. And in the midst of that, the Holy Ghost gives us joy and peace. He gives us self-control. Father, I pray for the pastors, Lord. I pray for the teachers, Lord. I pray for them that give out the doctrine and they labor in the Word. That spirit of foolishness, of goofiness, that, that spirit of entertainment in the churches and the musicians and the worship musicians, Lord, I bind that thing right now in the spirit. I bind that thing, Lord. And I ask that you pour out a spirit of worship upon the people. Find that spirit, Lord, that just puts out foolish music, foolish lyrics, uh, rhythm, beat rhythms, drum rhythms, Lord, so the flesh can move instead of the spirit, Lord. Wake up your worship leaders in the churches. Wake up your pastors, Lord. Father, I pray for, about for the apostles and the prophets. Restore the foundation because that's what the church is built upon. And Lord, I rebuke those pastors in the name of Jesus. I rebuke those Bible teachers in the name of Jesus that say there's no more pastors. <laughs> Not pastors, but no more prophets. No more apostles. If that was true, then there would be no more pastors, no more teachers either. Because it's in the same context. So Lord, just correct them, Lord. And show him, show them, Lord, that there are real blood-bought apostles and prophets and the apostles are saved for the last day. For the last day. They're not after money. They're not covetous. They lay their life down for the sheep just like they're supposed to. And the prophets prophesy a sure word. And it's always in accordance with the authority of the written word. 
and it cannot be anything different in this written word. And you that don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, you need to be corrected, because it's a lie out of the pits of hell. God's grace did not trump the works of God's Spirit in the gifts of the Spirit in the ministry, but it has opened the door to be able to suffer, just like Paul did, when he asked Jesus three times to take it away from him, the suffering that he had, and Jesus said no. He says, because my weakness is made, weakness is made perfect. The grace of God is magnified and made perfect in your weakness. My grace is sufficient, amen? And Paul still went around laying hands on people and people were healed, were they not? He still did various miracles. When a man was bitten by the snake on that island and he should have died and he waited for a long time. Paul was bitten and he should have died and he waited for a long time and he didn't die. So the miracles went on. And the book of Acts isn't finished, saints. It's continuing on and the Lord's coming back. And we need a restoration of this. So let the true apostles and prophets, the true pastors, evangelists, and, pre and preachers and teachers. Father, I pray for wisdom and understanding, Lord, that your word 